Hello and welcome to Night Prayer from St Thomas's Church on Sunday the 14th of June. I hope that you have had a blessed day and as we come now towards the end of the day to meet with God, you may like to have a candle lit, you may like to have a cross in front of you and if you would like to do the Bible readings, they are Psalm 43, Psalm 43, and the other reading is from the first book of Samuel, chapter 21, verses 1 to 15. So Psalm 43, and the first book of Samuel, chapter 21. Let's just be still for a moment and remember God's presence with us. The eternal God is your refuge, and underneath are the everlasting arms. The Lord Almighty grant us a quiet night and a perfect end. Amen. Our help is in the name of the Lord, who made heaven and earth. I'm going to spend a few more moments in silence now as we reflect back on the day that has passed. There may be things that you want to surrender to God to ask for his forgiveness. So in order to fully embrace the, the rest of the service, we need to just let go of certain things. So let's just take a few moments to think about that and surrender them to God. Save us, O Lord, while waking, and guard us while sleeping, that awake we, we may watch with Christ, and asleep may rest in peace. Before the ending of the day, Creator of the world, we pray, that you with steadfast love would keep your watch around us while we sleep. From evil dreams defend our sight, from fears and terrors of the night, Tread underfoot our deadly foe, that we no simple thought may know. O Father, that we ask be done, through Jesus Christ, your only Son, and Holy Spirit, by whose breath our souls are raised to life from death. And so now we have our Bible readings. The first reading is from the book of Psalms. It's Psalm 43. Vindicate me, my God, and plead my cause against an unfaithful nation. Rescue me from those who are deceitful and wicked. For you are my God, you are, my, you are God my stronghold. Why have you rejected me? Why must I go about mourning, oppressed by the enemy? Send me your light and your faithful care. Let them lead me. Let them bring me to your holy mountain, to the place where you dwell. Then I will go to the altar of my God, to God my joy and my delight. I will praise you with the lyre, O God, my God. Why, my soul, are you downcast? Why so disturbed within me? Put your hope in God, for I will yet praise him, my Saviour and my God. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Just want to 
just do a very short reflection on Psalm 43 before going on to the next reading. The theme of this psalm is hope in the time of discouragement. Our hope is in God. The writer is asking God to send his light and truth to guide him to the holy place. God's truth provides the right path. God's light gives clear vision to follow it. If just right now you feel surrounded by darkness and uncertainty, follow God's truth and God's light. He has promised that he will guide us. And the second reading is from the first book of Samuel, chapter 21, verses 1 to 15. Saul is pursuing David. David went to Nob to Hamilach, the priest. Hamilach trembled when he met him and asked, Why are you alone? Why is no one with you? David answered Amalek the priest, The king sent me on a mission and said to me, No one is to know anything about the mission I am sending you on. As for my men, I have told them to meet me at a certain place. Now then, what have you to hand? Give me five loaves of bread or whatever you can find. But the priest answered David, I don't have any ordinary bread to hand. However, there is some consecrated bread here, provided the, women have, uh, the men have kept themselves from women. David replied, Indeed, women have been kept from us, as usual, whenever I set out. The men's bodies are holy, even on missions that are not holy. How much more so today? So the priest gave him the consecrated bread, since there was no bread there except the bread of the presence that had been removed from before the Lord and replaced by hot bread on the day it was taken away. Now one of Saul's servants was there that day, detained before the Lord, he was Doeg the Edomite, Saul's chief shepherd. David asked Amalek, Don't you have a spear or sword here? I haven't brought my sword or any other weapon, because the king's mission was urgent. The priest replied, The sword of Goliath the Philistine, whom you killed in the valley of Elah, is here. It is wrapped in a cloth behind the ephod. If you want it, take it. There is no sword here but that one. David said, There is none like it. Give it to me. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Again, we uh, need to engage with scripture that may not be very easy or very clear to us. We have to unwrap it and find out what God is saying to us now. David defeated Goliath and had had a great success in battle against Israel's enemies. He, was, he had already been appointed as the next leader of the nation, but Saul was still the current king, and he was determined to have David killed. So David is fleeing as Saul pursues him. David reaches a town and seeks out the priest Hamilek and asks him for bread. There is no regular bread available, and the only bread that is available was
was what was called the bread of the presence, holy bread, which was supposed to be consumed only by the priests. Once a week, on the Sabbath, a priest would go into the holy place of the tabernacle or temple and place twelve freshly baked loaves of bread on a small table. This is the bread called the bread of the presence, symbolizing God's presence with his people and his care for them. Ahimelech puts aside religious ceremony because of David's need for food. He's therefore upholding the higher law of love as written in the book of Leviticus. Centuries later, Jesus would refer to this incident. You find that in Matthew's Gospel and Luke's Gospel. He refers to this incident to show that God's law has to be applied with compassion. To do good and save lives is God's greater law. However, we cannot ignore the lie that David says in verse 2 when he tells Ahimelech that he is on a mission for the king. That's just not true. He is actually fleeing from the king. And the lie has dire consequences later on in the story. Yes, David lied to protect himself, and some may excuse this as an act of defence, where a soldier needs to deceive an enemy. But nowhere is David's lie condoned. The Bible makes it very clear that lying is wrong. Like every other sin, it is serious in the eyes of God and may lead to all sorts of harmful consequences. Remembering our psalm, Psalm 43, and as we look to Jesus, our Saviour, if we search for God's truth and light, we will find them, and God will bring us to a place of sanctuary, a holy place because his presence is with us. And in that holy place, I will seek his face, Messiah. Amen. And so now, let us turn to our prayers. And we hold before God in prayer all those who minister in his name, who minister in truth and in light. Heavenly Father, we pray, we pray for all those who are working at this moment to give care and compassion to your people. We pray, we pray for all ministers, all pastoral carers, we pray for our bishops, Julian, Philip and Jill. We pray for David, our vicar. Praying a, a, a special blessing on him as he goes about the community, as he makes contact with people, seeking out their needs and finding ways to meet those needs. We Pray for Alison, his wife, and Josh, praying a blessing on them and on the vicarage. Keep them safe, Lord. Bless Alison's ministry. Bless all those who work with her. We pray for Barbara as she continues her studies towards ordination. Lord, we thank you for all that you have given us through Barbara. And we pray you to bless her in all that she does in your name. 
we pray for Yvonne. And we pray, pray, Lord, for all the outreach contacts that have been made over the years. And we pray that people will, even now, through her ministry, come to know Jesus Christ as their Lord. Heavenly Father, we hold before you Emma Swarbrick, who is to be our curate in a few months' time. We pray for Emma and her family as they prepare to come and join us here and be part of the family of St. Thomas's. Lord, give Emma all that she needs. And we ask you to bless her ministry. In Jesus' name, Amen. And as we think about our own church family here, we pray for people by name. We bring before God Terry, Irene, Alison and Billy, Jude and Richard, Lynn, Margaret, Anne, Pat, Sarah, Tony, Anne and Glyn, Jane, John and Kathleen, Susan, Anne and Ian, Matthew, Doreen, Sandra, Angie and Steve, Bob and Sue, Sheila, Ian and Sue, Louise, Ken, Wendy, Gwyneth, Bernard, Bernard, Gordon and Andy. And for all those, O oh Lord, who are hearing your message through our online services, Lord, we pray that you are working in people's lives and hearts and minds to bring them to Jesus Christ. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray, O oh Lord, for people in positions of authority and power in our town and in our country, praying that you will give them all the wisdom to make the right decisions. May they be led by your truth and your light. In Jesus' name we pray. Almighty God, please bring restoration and healing to our nation and across the world. Where there is unrest, where there is conflict, Lord, send your spirit of peace. Raise up men and women of integrity who will seek justice. Lord, we ask for the coming of your kingdom on this earth. In Jesus' name, Amen. Merciful God, we entrust to your unfailing care this night those who are ill or in pain, and in a moment's quiet, name before God those people who are on your heart at the moment. Lord, for all those who have been named, we ask for your healing touch. And from our fellowship here at St. Thomas's, tonight we particularly pray for Sheila. Praying, O oh Lord, that you will send your angels around her, that she will know your comfort and your peace. Lord, speak to her as deep calls to deep. Let, let her know in her spirit, Lord, that you are with her. We pray for Louise, 
for Debbie and for Stephen, for Nick and Joanne, for Bob and Sue, for Norman and Jean. Heavenly Father, be very near all those who are grieving at this time. Families who are in mourning at the loss of a loved one. Lord, surround them with your love. Give them comfort and strength. May they have people around them who will say and do all that is needed for them. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. God, our Father, whose, who by whose mercy the world turns safely into darkness and returns again to light, we place into your hands our unfinished tasks, our unsolved problems, and our unfulfilled hopes. To your love and protection we commit each other and all those we love, knowing that you alone are our sure defender, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. So being made one by the power of the Holy Spirit, let us pray with confidence, as Jesus himself taught us. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. In peace we will lie down and sleep. For you alone, Lord, make us dwell in safety. And so let us bless one another in those words from Numbers chapter 6. The Lord bless us and keep us. The Lord make his face to shine upon us and be gracious to us. The Lord turn his face towards us and give us peace. Amen. And so if you have lit a candle for tonight's service, please do extinguish that before you go to bed. And I hope and pray that you will have a peaceful, restful night's sleep. Good night.